Well, hi, folks. Bill O'Leary here uh, from Legacy Planning Law Group, uh, and I'm going to talk about in this video uh, estate taxes. And the question is, how can you minimize estate tax liability? So you're going to learn three things. Number one, what the estate tax is. Number two, how many of us really have a concern about estate taxes? And three, some ways that you can reduce the estate tax exposure if your estate is big enough. So again, by way of introduction, uh, so I'm Bill O'Leary. I'm an estate planning attorney and an elder law attorney, probate attorney with Legacy Planning Law Group in Jacksonville, Florida. So jump right in here. So if estate planning and in particular the estate tax, you know, uh, have not been on your radar screen, now may be the time to start thinking about it, depending on your situation. Now, first, it's true that most people are not concerned about the estate tax, what's also known as the death tax, and that they don't need to be concerned about it. Uh, why? Because only people with, you know, large estates, taxable estates that are worth more than $13 million uh, per person uh, need to worry about the de death tax. Um, and actually, that can be um, doubled uh, if you're a married couple to about $26 million. That's a lot of money. That number is called the lifetime exemption. And again, that's why a small fraction of people need to worry about the death tax. And although it's true that that limit, that exemption amount is going to go down to about half uh, the size starting in 2026, 20, uh, still very few people will have estates large enough to have a death tax problem. But if you're fortunate enough to have a large estate and you're interested in maybe ways to reduce the amount of potential death tax, then this video is for you. So what are some ways you can reduce the uh, death tax hit on your loved ones? Number one, to engage in gifting. You see, the tax law has a really nice perk in it that allows you to make gifts to people and not have it count towards your lifetime um, estate tax exemption amount. It's called the annual exclusion. And it says you can give away $17,000. That's the number here in 2023. You can give away $17,000 to a person and have it not count towards your lifetime exemption amount. So you don't start eating into that, you see. And in fact, you can give $17,000 to somebody this year and give another $17,000 to that same person next year and each year thereafter into the future. And there's more to this annual exclusion. You can give $17,000 per person per year to as many people as you want. Think grandkids. Um, and so what, what this sort of regular gifting program does is reduce the value of your estate without sort of eating into your lifetime exemption. Another way you can reduce estate tax exposure is by funding a 529 education account. So if there are children or grandchildren in your life, let's say funding an education account for them can also reduce the value of your estate. Now, while lifetime contribution limits to a 529 are set by um, uh, each state has their own limit, you can contribute up to $17,000 every year without triggering the gift tax, like I, uh, like I just mentioned. And once it's inside the account, the money is not considered part of your estate, not only the money you put in there, but as the money grows. And you can also receive five years worth of annual gifts for a total of up to $85,000 per person here in 2023 uh, per beneficiary without incurring any gift taxes, okay? Now, number three, another idea. Think about charitable giving. It can feel great to give uh, charitable donations to you know philanthropic causes uh, or charities uh, that you care about. And if your spouse, family, or other beneficiaries don't need the money, donating uh, to a qualified charity can help you uh, with your tax planning in the year that you make that donation while also reducing the value of your estate that might be subject to the death tax after you die. So for example, let's say you itemize deductions on your annual income tax return. You can contribute to what's called a donor advised fund and you can receive not only an income tax deduction for the year in which you uh, made the contribution to the fund, but there are other tax benefits as well, okay? So again, another way to sort of take money out of your estate for a charitable purpose. And if you happen to have, let's say, real estate or stocks, that's not th that kind of thing that you've owned for a long time that have gone up in value substantially from the time that you uh, bought them, you get even more tax benefits by making those contributions 
to um, an appropriate char charitable vehicle. How about this? Setting up special kinds of trust as a way to reduce your estate tax exposure. Um, so here are a few types of trusts you might consider. Number one is called a marital trust. Obviously, this is for a married couple. And there are two types of marital trust. One is what's called an AB trust. This type of trust is kind of a joint trust. The AB name refers to the two separate trusts that make up this overall big trust. Part A, trust part A, is the marital trust established for the surviving spouse's benefit. And the trust agreement specifies the rights of the surviving spouse to the assets. So for example, the surviving spouse will be able to draw income, maybe have a right to live in the house for the rest of uh, his or her life. And there's no estate tax on the assets put into this trust. The part B is a separate trust that comes into play when the surviving spouse dies and the trust assets are finally distributed to the original spouse's intended beneficiaries, the first spouse to pass. Uh, a second kind of marital trust is called a Q-tip trust. And no, it's not what you put in, in your ear to clean your ear. It's uh, Q-T-I-P. It's short for something that's longer. I'm not going to go into it, the technical name. It's similar to the AB trust that I just mentioned, except the surviving spouse is not given the same level of access or control over the marital trust assets. Another kind of trust you can set up is called a life insurance trust, an irrevocable life insurance trust, I-L-I-T for short, ILIT. This kind of trust is a very helpful tool. Let's say you're close to going over the... Um, the death tax exemption amount and, and owning a life insurance policy would put you over the top into taxable estate. You can put instead the policy into the trust instead of you owning it individually to prevent the life insurance payout, the proceeds or death benefit from putting your estate over the exemption amount. And placing the policy into a trust, again, takes it out of your estate for estate tax purposes while holding it there for your beneficiaries. And the trust will go on to specify when and how to pay out the life insurance proceeds once you pass away, okay? Keep in mind that trust is irrevocable, so you can't change it after you put it in place. One more trust I wanna mention is a qualified personal residence trust, okay? And this type of trust, it lets you put a house into the trust. Typically, this is a married couple that does this. And um, your kids, let's say, are the beneficiaries of the trust, but you retain the right to live in there for a certain period of time. And at the end of the trust, the, the, um, the assets in the trust passes to the beneficiaries. So if you'd like to know a little bit more about how you can minimize the estate tax liability and maybe how we can help, we'd love to talk to you. So we invite you to schedule a, uh, a really easy thing to do, a free 15-minute phone call that we call our discovery call. And uh, just click on the link that, that now uh, pops up in this video, it takes you right to our booking calendar, or you can go to our website, Legacy Planning Law Group, hit the blue um, uh, schedule your free discovery call button, S uh, pick a day and time that works. It's a, a chance for us to start the conversation. If you've enjoyed this video, please uh, share and like it and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. So Bill O'Leary for now, signing off. Go make it a great day and a better world.